get married in the chapel? Oh, love? Love? Mom, is that you? Did you know that Elizabeth Shue played her role in Back to the Future while grieving her dead brother? Or that she only ever got one Academy Award nomination? Well, stick around if you didn't, cause today we're going to be taking a look at the bright and dark side of her story. Let's begin. Oh, why you playing this stuff in the face with the After the safety of it is... The future? From her early days in the spotlight to the peak of her success, Shu's journey is marked by the duality of triumphs and setbacks, both on and off the screen. Let's delve into the tragic story of Elizabeth Shu, exploring the highs, lows, and the intricate dance between personal and professional life. Over the course of her life, Elizabeth Shu has been many things. She's been a soccer player, a commercial actress, an 80s teen fave, an Oscar-nominated leading lady, a mother, a college student, and a television mainstay, though not necessarily in that order. She's had years when she's working on overtime and had many movies coming out at once, but also times when she's gone a while between high-profile projects. The sense that Shu frequently disappears from public life for long stretches at a time might allude to the fact that she is uninterested in her own celebrity life, not really drawn by the glitz and glamour that attracts so many others. However, she loves being an actress. That's why, no matter how her career is going at any given time, she seems ultimately fine with where life takes her. I just really enjoy the work that I do, she told Pop Entertainment. I find things. Every year, I seem to find one movie, even if it doesn't see the light of day, I still find a film that challenges me as an actress. I still work with people I really respect. As long as I can do that, that's really the point. As we navigate through the various chapters of Elizabeth Shue's life, we'll unravel the complexities that define her journey, shedding light on the challenges she faced, the moments of glory, and the profound impact of her story on the entertainment industry. Get around? I brought this note back from the future and now it's a race. Elizabeth Shue's story begins in the quiet corridors of her childhood, shaped by influences that would eventually propel her into the limelight. She was born on October 6, 1963, in Wilmington, Delaware, the daughter of Anne Brewster and James William Shue a lawyer, real estate developer, president of the International Food and Beverage Corporation, and a one-time congressional candidate, a position for which the future actress actually helped him campaign at the tender age of five. We drove around in parades and met people in bingo games, she later recalled to the Boston Globe. We've always just grown up with this sense of idealism about politics. Her parents divorced when she was nine, and she was subsequently raised with and by her three brothers, William, Andrew, and John. During this time, she grew very close to the bunch due to her father slowly fading out of their lives shortly after the divorce and her mother working long hours to keep the family up. Her brother, Andrew Shue, told the newspaper that they used to have to make milk last longer by adding powdered milk to it, and the four kids mostly spent time on their own while their mother commuted to work at a bank. Shu graduated from Columbia High School in 1981 in Maplewood, New Jersey, where she and Andrew were inducted into the school's Hall of Fame in 1994. Her upbringing laid the foundation for a future in the performing arts. As a young talent, Shu found her calling in acting, displaying an early prowess that hinted at the success that would follow. Her younger brother, Andrew, is also an actor, best known for his role as Billy Campbell in the Fox series Melrose Place. After graduating from high school, Shu attended Wellesley College. She then transferred to the prestigious Harvard University in 1985. Surprisingly, she withdrew from the school to pursue her acting career just one semester short of earning her degree. 
This was in part because she was inspired by a friend to work in television commercials as a way to pay for the very college she was attending. Over a decade later, in 2000, she returned to Harvard and completed her BA in government. As a teenager, the initial years of Xu's career witnessed a series of promising achievements from local theater productions to breakthrough roles. Elizabeth began dipping her toe into the world of entertainment. She picked up roles in a number of commercials. The future star helped sell everything from Chules to Honeywell, but her longest gig was what she later referred to on The Rich Eisen Show as The Burger King Girl. One advertisement put Elizabeth Shue on screen with fellow stars-to-be Leah Thompson and Sarah Michelle Gellar. Following this advertising and media success, it didn't long for the actress to secure her first role, as well as subsequent roles that would change the trajectory of her career for the better. Let's look at a few of them. I'm sorry about your eye. I mean, I guess you should have just given it to him. Well, why? It wasn't his, right? Yeah, it wasn't his. She made her feature film debut in 1984, when she co-starred opposite Ralph Macchio in The Karate Kid as Ali Mills, a high school cheerleader and the love interest of Macchio's main character. She was a bit intimidated, and as she later recalled to Sports Illustrated, that she and the other kids were in awe of Macchio. Ralph was a big star compared to the rest of us, she said. We were all like, whoa. He has a manager. She later joked about being better at both soccer and karate than Macchio was, though her character wasn't as good at soccer as she was. As for martial arts, well, of course I didn't train, she joked on The Rich Eisen Show. I'm sure I would have been much better if I had trained. I could have kicked his ass. Furthermore, Shu said she wasn't sure the movie would be a hit. I was worried, she confessed. I thought it sounded a little strange. The Karate Kid? And Ralph being Ralph, I didn't think that he would have any credibility as a karate expert. Fortunately for her career at the time, she was wrong, as the movie was a commercial and critical success. Today, she is proud of how the movie has demonstrated staying power all these decades later. All my kids have watched it, she said. There's so much that's good about it. Shu herself was one of the good things about the movie, and the budding star's role would soon lead to bigger and better opportunities for her. You came all the way out here just to return this? Elizabeth Shu's next big role was Adventures in Babysitting. She played the titular babysitter, Chris, a teenage caretaker from the suburbs who, through a series of misadventures, gets stranded in Chicago with the kids she's watching. The movie was mostly a critical success. Nowadays, the film represents an important part of Shu's early career. After all, it was Shu's first time as a leading lady. She reflected on the movie's legacy in an interview with Today, ruminating Looking back at the few great roles that I feel like I've had, and I think there are a few, and I really do believe in my heart that is one of them because she gets to carry the movie. On the beach over there, do you have a phone anywhere? No, no. Excuse me, excuse me. While filming the flair bartending romance, Shu and Cruz shot a scene involving a helicopter. According to camera operator Bill Bennett, via The Sun, Shu ran toward the chopper and Cruz stopped her before she could injure herself on the tail rotor. Tom is a pilot, rated in both airplanes and helicopters, and instantly saw the danger, Bennett wrote. He lunged after her, but only was able to grab her legs, tackling her to the ground. He rolled her over, dragging her at the same time, and you could see the momentary anger on her face. Thankfully, she realized that Cruz had just saved her life. Her ascent in the world of entertainment was swift. These early victories not only showcased her acting abilities, but also hinted at the potential for greatness that would characterize her career. Shu's journey gained momentum with breakthrough performances that captivated audiences and critics. Her roles showcased her versatility and established her as a rising star. 
The early chapters of her career painted a picture of a talented actress poised for an extraordinary trajectory, but the unfolding story would reveal unforeseen challenges that lay ahead. As Elizabeth Shue soared to the peak of success, her name became synonymous with Hollywood stardom. Her notable roles in blockbuster films catapulted her into the A-list, earning critical acclaim and a dedicated fan base. Shu's undeniable talent and on-screen charisma cemented her status as a leading figure in the entertainment industry. The accolades poured in, marking a pinnacle in Shu's career. From prestigious awards to nominations, the industry recognized her contributions to cinema. This period of booming success not only brought professional triumphs, but also presented Shu with opportunities that would shape her legacy in the years to come. She won the Young Artist Awards for the Best Young Supporting Actress in a Motion Picture, Musical, Comedy, Adventure or Drama with The Karate Kid, was nominated for Saturn Awards Best Act, won the Circuit Community Award as Best Actress Leaving Las Vegas, she also won the Independent Spirit Awards for Best Female Lead, to mention a few. Beyond individual achievements, Shu's impact resonated throughout the film industry. Her presence influenced casting decisions, script choices, and even narrative trends. The peak of her success became a defining era in Hollywood, leaving an indelible mark that would endure even as the tides of fortune shifted. However, behind the dazzling facade of success, Elizabeth Shue faced a series of personal struggles that would test her resilience. The challenges of maintaining success in a demanding industry took a toll on her well-being, both mentally and emotionally. As the spotlight intensified, so did the difficulties in navigating the delicate balance between fame and personal life. Chu's personal life was not immune to the pressures of stardom. The public eye scrutinized her relationships, adding an extra layer of complexity to her journey. The intrusions into her private life became a stark reminder of the sacrifices that often accompany fame, and Chu found herself caught in the crossfire between personal happiness the year and the demands of her career. The turned out to be a career. pivotal one in Elizabeth Chu's life. She went on vacation with her family and her older brother William fell out of a tree while on a tire swing. He died from his injuries. According to the book, Healing, Advice for Recovering Your Inner Strength and Spirit from the World's Most Famous Survivors, Shu witnessed his death. My brother's death stripped away the dishonesty in my life, she said. because it's a universal issue. We all lose people we care for. What happened to Will taught me that human beings are fragile. His death taught me not to be afraid anymore of who I was. Shu said the incident put her in therapy, which wound up being beneficial. Also around this time, Shu met and fell in love with documentary filmmaker Davis Guggenheim. At the time, she was still struggling with William's loss. Guggenheim later told the Los Angeles Times, I don't think you can continue after that and live on the surface. You cannot approach life without seeing there's a wonderful, horrible duality to things. Guggenheim acknowledged that the shocking event may have provided an unexpected gift for his now wife's career. What it means is that she can suddenly, as an actress, dig a whole lot deeper, he said. Balancing the demands of a flourishing career with personal well-being became an intricate dance for Shu. The toll of this struggle would become evident in the subsequent chapters of her life, marking the beginning of a challenging period that would shape her narrative in unforeseen circumstances. While Elizabeth Shu was experiencing the emotional fallout of her brother's death, Back to the Future star Claudia Wells dealt with her own family tragedy when it came time to bring Jennifer back for Back to the Future Part 2. Her mother had fourth stage lymphoma, she later told the Huffington Post. I had so much happening personally that deep down I never considered reprising my role and deep in my soul I knew this was the right choice for me. Elizabeth Shue instead took over the role of Jennifer in Back to the Future Part 2 and Part 3. 
the character was heavily involved in the second film, giving Shu something to focus on through her recent loss, but the character only appeared briefly in the trilogy's concluding film. The relationship she formed in the sequels, however, would go strong for decades. In 2023, her husband Davis Guggenheim directed Still, a Michael J. Fox movie, a documentary about Shu's former co-star Michael J. Fox's life and his experience with Parkinson's disease. Michael Hart, the doc's editor, revealed to the New York Times that Guggenheim wasn't as familiar with Fox's oeuvre or his wife's, as one might have expected. I don't think Davis had seen the Back to the Future films before this. And his wife is in them, he said. In 1995, Elizabeth Shue entered a new phase of her career, while she had previously starred in major commercial successes with Leaving Las Vegas, the actor found something new, massive, critical acclaim. In the film, she plays Sarah, a Las Vegas sex worker who befriends a suicidal alcoholic, Nicolas Cage. In the past, most of Shu's films had been less adult, but she told Roger Ebert that she was ready to tackle the film's more challenging material. The movie was very well received. Shu's performance was singled out for awards recognition by a number of voting bodies, and she was nominated for a BAFTA, a Golden Globe, and an Oscar for her role. Unfortunately, she didn't win any of the three, but she didn't let that get her down. As she told the Virginian pilot, I knew what the outcome would be. I wasn't surprised. I was glad for Susan Sarandon, who won the Oscar instead. I felt she deserved it. In the 1980s, Elizabeth Shue was a star on the rise, but she had other aspirations. She had attended Wellesley College and Harvard University, but kept having to leave to manage her acting career. The only problem with taking time off from school to make a movie is the break in continuity of my studies. It's kind of chopped up, she told UPI. I've been going to college for six years now. Though she only had one semester left at the time, her acting career really took off and Shu didn't finish her studies. She went back to Harvard in 2000, this time determined to finish. My brain was starting to dry up, she told Movieline. In Hollywood, you're fortunate if you get a role where your brain is engaged, but those experiences are rare. Though it might have been distracting to have an Oscar-nominated actor walking around Cambridge, Shu had some cover. Natalie Portman was there too, she told people that she saw Portman around campus many times, but never introduced herself. I think that it also helped my anonymity because there was already someone there who was already much more famous there on the campus, she said. This time, she stuck with it, graduating with a degree in political science. She told The Morning Call, Graduating was the greatest achievement of my life so far, apart from being a mom. The once bright trajectory of Elizabeth Shue's career took an unexpected turn as she faced a series of setbacks. Factors ranging from industry shifts to critical and commercial disappointments contributed to a decline in her popularity. The highs of her peak were replaced by a challenging period that tested her resolve and determination. Industry dynamics evolved and Shu found herself grappling with changing trends and preferences. The roles that once defined her success became scarce, and the challenges of reinvention in a fast-paced industry became increasingly daunting. The very elements that propelled her to stardom seemed to conspire against her, leading to a noticeable downturn in her career. When she was younger, Elizabeth Shu was nervous about getting older. She expressed her aging anxiety in a 2000 interview with Movie Line, after the journalist reminded her she'd once said, the best thing about getting older is accepting yourself for who you are and not taking any bullshit. Shu confirmed that she still felt that way, adding, the hard thing is that when you finally start feeling good about yourself on the inside, your outsides start going away. Over two decades later, Shu's outlook on life seems to have changed. 
She told AARP in 2017 that she was focused on maintaining her health by playing tennis, explaining, You need to embrace getting older as a gift. I do believe that. One of my brothers passed away when he was nearly 27, so I'm always very aware of how lucky I am to grow older. Nowadays, Shu has made peace with both her insides and outsides. She told Page Six in June 2023 that she was no longer nervous about getting older, and in fact, she said she's looking forward to it. While she refused to rule out ever getting plastic surgery in the movie line interview, Shu now has no plans to do so. I'm curious to see one day what I was intended to look like as an old lady, she revealed. I want to know what it's going to be like, and I want to see it, and I'm not afraid. Despite her undeniable talent, Shu faced a series of critical and commercial disappointments. Projects that were anticipated to be turning points in her career failed to meet expectations. The unforgiving nature of the industry and the scrutiny that accompanied each misstep created a narrative of decline that overshadowed her earlier successes. As the industry underwent transformative changes, Shu found herself caught in the cross-currents of evolving tastes and preferences. The once unstoppable force faced challenges adapting to a new landscape, further contributing to the ebb in her career. The shadows of her past achievements loomed large, and the road to recovery appeared elusive, though it didn't stop her from trying. Undeterred by the setbacks, Elizabeth Shu embarked on a journey to reclaim her foothold in the industry. The narrative of her comeback unfolded through deliberate efforts to revive her career. Shu sought out projects and collaborations that would showcase her talent, attempting to rewrite the script of her professional trajectory. The first steps in Shu's comeback were marked by deliberate choices in selecting projects that highlighted her versatility. Let's take a look at those first steps. Almost two decades after her brother William died, Elizabeth Shu's family approached her with a proposition. Her brother Andrew Shu, a former Melrose Place star, and her husband Davis Guggenheim were developing a film called Gracie. The movie would be about a young girl who plays on an all-boys soccer team as Elizabeth herself once had. It was also inspired in big part by Elizabeth's relationship with William. Furthermore, they wanted her to play a version of her mother. At that point, I didn't have any choice, Shu told the Traveller Watchman. Looking back, I'm glad that they did get me involved. The filming experience was an emotional one. There were many surreal moments during the filming that really took me by surprise. Very emotional moments, Shu reflected. The biggest hurdle, she said, was filming the older brother character's death scene. According to New Jersey Monthly, the family financed the film without studio backing and chose to film it where they grew up, in New Jersey. It's where we met our friends where we felt our first moments of independence, Shu explained. We roamed, the entire town was our backyard. The movie was ultimately a mild critical success. Still, the experience of turning their pain into art was a cathartic one. Guggenheim said that the film gave them that sense of incredible transcendence where you're able to look outside yourself and outside your family. For the most part, Elizabeth Shu had a relatively quiet 2000s. In 2008, however, she returned to the big screen, playing one of her most unusual roles yet, that of Elizabeth Shue. In Andrew Fleming's raucous musical comedy Hamlet 2, Shue played herself as an out-of-work actor, now making a living as a nurse in Tucson, Arizona. I just, you know, got kind of sick of the business, you know, just sick of all the horrible people. Her character explains to a starstruck Dana, Steve Coogan, the film's main character. Shu told Pop Entertainment that she was flattered by Dana's joy. I would love it if people recognize me the way he recognizes me in the movie, she said. It's so entertaining and over the top. You feel so much love and appreciation. Furthermore, Shu wasn't offended by the film's joke that her career in Hollywood was over. 
Sometimes your ego suffers when you go through the ups and downs, but I'm actually happier now than I've ever been. So I think I was probably in a very confident spot in reality to say how great to make fun of my insecurity, she said. A few years after the film's release, Shu told RadioFree.com she wished it had done better. I mean, you're so used to the disappointments of films that don't turn out to be what you had hoped, she said. But it is sad when something so worthy doesn't find an audience. Whether through challenging roles, genre diversification, or collaborations with acclaimed filmmakers, she aimed to demonstrate her enduring relevance in an ever-evolving entertainment landscape. Shu's collaborations with industry veterans and emerging talents played a pivotal role in her attempt at a resurgence. The choice of scripts and the strategic alliances she forged were instrumental in shaping the narrative of her comeback. These projects became a canvas for her to showcase not only her acting prowess, but also her adaptability to the changing demands of the industry. Amidst the trials of a career in flux, Elizabeth Shue exhibited a remarkable resilience in the face of adversity. The personal struggles and professional setbacks tested her mettle, but Shue found ways to cope with the challenges that life threw her way. Her personal resilience emerged as a beacon during tumultuous times. Whether navigating through public scrutiny or grappling with the uncertainties of a fluctuating career, she demonstrated a strength that went beyond the glitz and glamour of Hollywood. Her ability to endure and persevere became an integral part of her evolving narrative. Coping with tragedy often involves seeking solace and support. Shu's journey was no exception, as she leaned on various coping mechanisms and support systems. From close-knit relationships to therapeutic outlets, she sought refuge in elements that provided stability amidst the storms of her life. The trials and tribulations of Shu's life imparted valuable lessons. The adversity she faced became a crucible for personal growth, offering insights into the complexities of fame, success, and the human spirit. As Shu emerged from the shadows, she carried with her a wisdom forged in the fires of adversity, contributing to a narrative that transcended the boundaries of a traditional Hollywood tale. As Elizabeth Shu's journey continued, her enduring legacy began to take shape, leaving an indelible mark on the entertainment industry. Beyond the trials and triumphs, Shu's contributions became a lasting influence that extended far beyond the silver screen. Her impact on the entertainment industry transcended individual performances. Her contributions influenced casting decisions, storytelling approaches, and the perception of women in Hollywood. For an Oscar-nominated star who was in some of the most famous movies of the 1980s and 90s, Elizabeth Shue keeps a relatively low profile as far as her personal life goes. After her Oscar nomination, she said, The celebrity thing is bad news. It's a reality I never had to face before. I wasn't prepared. Shue has, however, shared that she is a mother three times over. She and Davis Guggenheim have a son named Miles and daughters named Stella and Agnes. Having children made Shu reconsider her priorities. On the Tavis Smiley Show, she spoke about the fact that she found herself deciding what she cared about more, her family or her career. She picked family. He's uh, two years old. Wow, okay. Yeah, and he's at this great, great age yeah. because he repeats everything you say. Oh, is that, oh, is that good? Well, it can be great, you know, when I'm talking to Davis, my husband, I say, I say, I love you, Dada, and I say, I love you, Dada. I thought, okay, at the end of my life, I'm going to have videos that are stacked up on a shelf, or I'm going to have three children that will be my bed when I die, she said. And that choice was so easy when I thought about each film. It's an amazing experience, but it ends up just being a video in the end. Elizabeth Shue's story is a tapestry woven with threads of tragedy, resilience, and lasting influence. From the highs of success to the depths of adversity, 
Her journey offers a multifaceted lens through which we can explore the complexities of a life lived in the public eye. As we reflect on Shu's legacy, we find not just a Hollywood tale, but a narrative that resonates with the universal struggles and triumphs inherent in the human experience. Did you enjoy the story? Shed some more light on Shu's life and career? Let us know down in the comments below. If you like this video, you'll love the one showing on your screen. Click now and we'll see you in the next one.